hello students welcome back to the lecture series on discrete mathematics we are learning techniques of counting and this is video part 2 in this video we are going to learn the inclusion exclusion principle without the proof let us see the principle first the principle states that when two tasks can be done at the same time we cannot use the sum rule to count the number of ways to do one of the two tasks for example, uh, I can say that uh, if uh, there is two flavors of the ice cream at a shop and we have, for example, n number of people. Okay, so we can say that if uh, n1 out of uh, those uh, ate the vanilla ice cream and n2 out of those ate the uh, mango ice cream and uh, it may be the case that there may be some people who had both the ice cream. That means they had the vanilla as well and the mango as well. In this case, we don't know exactly how many of them ate just the vanilla or how many of them had only the mango ice cream. So in this case, if you try to apply the sum rule or the product rule, we get difficulty because adding the number of ways to do each task leads to an overcount. Since the ways to do both tasks are counted twice. To count the correctly, we are going to apply this and this is called the principle of inclusion-exclusion. Let us see the principle of exclusion, inclusion-exclusion. For any two finite sets A and B, the cardinality of A union B. Since we have already learned the set theory, the A union B set is one in which the element is either in A or in B or in both. The cardinality of such thing is equal to cardinality of A plus cardinality of B minus cardinality of A intersection B. That means cardinality of A and B. In the A intersection B, only those will be there who are in A as well as in B. So for three sets, we have the case A union B union C cardinality. That means if a set is either in A or in B or in C or in all of the three or in A union B or in B union C or in A union C. So cardinality of such set will be cardinality of A, pure A, B, C. Then we are going to subtract the common things. Means if it is there in A intersection B, if it is there in B intersection C and A intersection C and then we are going to add a intersection B intersection C that means it is considered in A set as well as in B set as well as in C set so uh, I just talk about the example for any two finite sets A and B so here in the uh, as I said in the example for example set A is the uh, set of people who had the vanilla ice cream and set B is the set of people or the uh, who had the mango ice cream then the cardinality of A union B that means who either had vanilla or they had the mango or both. Such cardinality will be cardinality of those people who had only the vanilla. Then cardinality of the set who had the mango ice cream. And then we are going to subtract the number of people who had both the flavors. Means vanilla as well as the mango. Let us better understand this by means of an example. Okay, before that we have the important remarks. So we have the De Morgan's law. We are going to apply this in the example. If A and B are subsets of a finite set, U is the universal set, then A complement means set of people who are not in A. This is the complement of the A. The De Morgan law is A union B complement is equal to A complement intersection B complement. So we have the inclusion exclusion or the cardinality means number of elements in the set A intersection B complement. So A intersection B complement will contain the set of people who are in A or set of elements who are in A but not in B. So we are going to subtract out of A the common part that means the A intersection B. Now the third one is A intersection B intersection C complement means the number of elements which are in A and in B but not in C. So 
from the A intersection B, we are going to subtract the common one, common thing, which is A intersection B intersection C. Now the fourth one is A intersection B complement intersection C complement. And this means set of elements who are in A, but not in B and not in C. So from the A, we are going to subtract the common part between A and B, the common thing between A and C, and then since we have subtracted the common from A, B, C two times, we are going to add the common, which is common to all the three, that is A intersection B intersection C. Now let us see the example. For example, we have total 100 students. 60 students got distinction in first year, 25 got distinction in the second year, and 15 got distinctions in both the years. Here we are not saying that these sets of students are disjoint. We are not talking about the disjoint set of students. Out of 100 students, we have the 60 students, 15 students and 25 students. They may be same. So how many students got distinction in at least one year? So first of all, we should be able to understand what do you mean by at least one year. That means they have distinction in either A, or either in the first year or in the second year or in the third year or in all the years. So at least one means, at least one means the OR case or the union set will be there. So let us see A be the set of students would got distinction in the first year. Here there are two different types of sets. For example, A is the set of students who got distinction in the first year. And B is the set of students who got distinction in the second year. So cardinality of A will be 60 and cardinality of B will be 25. Now there are 15 students who got distinction in both the years. Means in the first year as well as in the second year. So we have the set A intersection B where the student will belong to the set A as well as the set B. So cardinality of such set, that is cardinality of A intersection B is 15. So what will be cardinality of A union B? And the rule is cardinality of A union B is cardinality of A plus B minus A intersection B. So 70 students are there who got distinction in at least one year. Let us go to the next example where we have another case. We have 200 students. Out of them, 80 are taking physics and 60 are taking chemistry and 30 are taking both the classes. How many students are either a physics class or a chemistry class? This is the first question. And the second is how many students are taking neither class? So U is set of students in a group. So Cardinality of U will be 200 since we are talking about 200 students. Let A be the set of students taking physics. The cardinality of A will be 80 and cardinality of B will be 60. If you want to consider the set of students who are taking either a physics or a chemistry class, we are talking about A union B. So this is cardinality of A union B. So cardinality of A union B. By inclusion exclusion principle will be cardinality of A plus cardinality of B minus cardinality of A intersection B. So the answer is 110. Now how many students are taking neither class means we want the number of students who are not in A and not in B. That means we are talking about A complement not in A and B complement not in B and the intersection. So A intersection B complement is which is not in A, not in B. So that means cardinality of U minus cardinality of A union B. So we are using the De Morgan's law here. So the answer is 200 minus 110. That is 90 students are taking neither class out of 200. That means they are not taking physics as well as not taking the chemistry class. Thank you.